Hello viewers, welcome to my channel IITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. And uh, in today's video, I have brought solution to the uh, check your understanding problem 13 from waves and uh, oscillations in uh, Pathfinder. This is a very often requested solution. Students find a lot of difficulty in this one, and that's why I decided to do this. So I had done the solution to part A of this uh, question in yesterday's video, and I'll give the link in the description. Uh, for that video and uh, today I am going to solve part B and C. So let me formally state uh, parts B and C of the question. So a point source is emitting sound isotropically uh, at constant power P and the sound travels with the velocity C relative to air. So here is a point source and it is emitting sound in all the directions and the power uh, is emitted in all the directions is P. Power emitted per unit time in every direction is P. and this is not a stationary source, it's moving with some velocity Vs. It's not a stationary source, okay. So, uh, then what do we have to find out, okay. So, it's velocity, let me just state here. Uh, so, it's moving with some velocity Vs, okay. Uh, towards a stationary detector. So, in part uh, B, this detector will be stationary, while in part C, this detector will also be moving. So, it's moving towards stationary detector. Find the suitable expression for intensity I of sound received by the detector at a distance r from the source. So remember that uh, this detector is at a distance r from the source at this instant. So there will be some wavefront passing through the detector and if this distance from source to detector is r but uh, uh, the wavefront, the center of curvature of the wavefront will not be at the source. Why? Because you can see as the source is moving the wavefronts are getting squeezed here and the center of for example here this uh, uh, all orangish uh, circle the center is somewhere over here although detector has already moved ahead okay so remember that this r is not the radius of the wavefront it is the uh, distance between the source and the detector okay so this is the part uh, b and part c is uh, a point source is moving in still air same uh, same thing is there but except for uh, detector being stationary the detector is also moving with the velocity vd constant velocity vd towards the source it is moving okay and again we have to find the suitable expression for intensity received by the detector at a distance r from the source so remember r is the distance instantaneous distance between source and the detector and not the radius of curvature of the wavefront that hits the detector okay that's an important distinction to make and uh, probably if you didn't get the right answer probably this is why you uh, didn't get the right answer because that's an important distinction in this problem okay so if you want to try out this problem you can try out on your own and then have a look at my solution so i'll get into my solution right away okay now imagine that the moving source is emitting energy acoustons. There is nothing called acoustons, but I have just uh, proposed acoustons for uh, better visualization of the problem. Uh, in my experience, it helps a lot uh, uh, in better visualization of this problem. If we visualize that the wavefront is emitting acoustons uniformly in all the directions. So, number of acoustons per unit area of the wavefront is same in all the directions. But because the source is isotropic, but uh, the spacing between the wavefronts is not uniform. You see, uh, here. If you see, if the uh, the st source were stationary, then wave wavefronts are uniformly spaced, and that's why whatever is the acouston density in this direction, same will be the acouston density in this direction, same will be the acouston density in every direction, right? Uh, and uh, but if uh, the wavefront itself is, I mean, the source itself is moving forward, then acouston density will be different. So. Uh, for example, uh, suppose here the wavelength is lambda and here the wavelength is lambda dash and I have shown 8 acoustons. Suppose this ds area, so this is one wavefront and this is the other wavefront. So the, between these two wavefronts, the time will be capital T which will be the time period between two emissions of compressions, right? In this time period from this ds area, let us say 8 acoustons are emitted. So then those 8 acoustons, they are moving normally to the wavefront and they are confined between these two wavefronts, right? And uh, uh, this is some volume okay this is some volume and when the source is moving again these eight acoustons are emitted but they are squeezed into a smaller volume why because this lambda dash is smaller so per unit area it is still eight acoustons here also per unit area it is eight acoustons but volume density becomes different because the wavefront is getting squeezed okay so i'll read out so imaginary the moving source to be emitting energy acoustons uh, uniformly in every direction from the surface of its wavelength wavefronts okay even though the number of such acoustons is uniform per unit area of wavefront due to isotropic nature of the source. So per unit area it is same in every direction. 
their volume density will have directional dependence due to the non uniform spacing between the wave fronts so i hope you got this idea why the volume density of acoustrons is going to be different okay okay <coughs> excuse me <laughs> okay let us compare the energy density on wave front of radius r on in the two cases source was stationary and source is moving okay so this is the diagram that i showed you okay so here the acoustron density is low because wavelength is larger and here acoustron density is high because of smaller wavelength as we can see that due to smaller wavelength in forward direction the volume density of the acoustrons has increased by a factor of lambda by lambda dash see this ds area and this ds area are same but here the length is large and here the length of the cylinder is small so uh, volume uh, density has increased uh, in the inverse ratio of volumes right so that is uh, lambda by lambda dash so if u were the energy density with stationary source with moving source the energy density will become simply u into lambda by lambda dash at the same point of the wave front at the same surface of the wave front this uh, energy density will get scaled up by a factor of lambda by lambda dash okay so if i were the intensity of sound for a stationary observer of sound with stationary source then the new intensity in the moving direction i dash will also be get scaled by uh, getting scaled by the same factor i into lambda by lambda dash uh, you recall you can you might recall that in yesterday's video i had proved that intensity is directly proportional to energy density just energy density multiplied by velocity of sound is the intensity you also uh, use a similar idea in photoelectric effect when you are calculating the radiation pressure and all so you might be recalling from there also otherwise you can have a look at my yesterday's video where i have proved this result okay so that means what the intensity uh, there becomes what i into lambda by lambda dash which is equal to now i is the so i is the intensity if the source were stationary so if the source were stationary then the intensity at a radius capital r is simply p upon 4 pi capital r square right where capital r is the radius of the wave front see if some wave front is emitted by the source from this position then this has expanded to a radius r then the intensity if the p is the power that is emitted then that power is distributed on a circle of radius capital r so intensity here would have been p upon 4 pi capital r square had the source been stationary okay but uh, because the wavelengths have changed so it, it gets it needs to be scaled by a factor of lambda by lambda dash so that's what i have written so this p so intensity at the detector will be p upon 4 pi r square and lambda by lambda dash it is a simple doppler result that will be simply equal to c upon c minus vs because the source was stationary in a time period of capital t this distance would have been ct but uh, actually because source is moving so it will move further distance of vs into capital t so this is the lambda dash that is ct minus vs into t so c minus vs proportional to c minus vs so so this is the intensity so can we stop here for part b answer is no why because this capital r is the radius of the wave front it is not the separation between the source and the observer whereas we are given the small r as the distance between the source and observer so we need to express this capital r in terms of the distance between the source and the observer capital r is the wave front radius which is different from the source and observer distance okay so we need to find the intensity in terms of separation r between the source and detector so from the shown figure if you see from the source this distance is let us say r let us say t is the time for which the wave front has been spreading so capital r is ct and small r let us say source has moved a distance vs into t in this time and s prime is the new distance new location of the source then s prime this is small r okay this is how we have been defined we have defined small r in the problem so small r is nothing but uh, ct minus vs into t and capital r is ct so using these two equations so capital r is ct and small r is capital r minus vs into t and you can eliminate t from here and you can express small r in terms of capital r or capital r can be expressed in terms of small r so that comes out to be small rc upon c minus vs so let's call this equation 5 and then i need to write here using equation 5 in 2 so uh, equation 2 is here so this is your equation 2 so capital r you substitute for capital r in terms of small r here uh, small rc upon c minus vs so if you put that then intensity can be expressed in terms of small r as this expression just substituted capital r as this and then simplified and this comes out to be p by 4 pi r square into 1 minus vs by c so this is your answer for part b okay now 
in part uh, c what is happening in part b only the source were, was moving and detector was stationary but in part c the detector is also moving head on towards the uh, source okay so then that means what it will be able to intercept further a larger amount of energy as compared to the case where detector were stationary so from the frame of the acoustons see acoustons are all moving perpendicular to the wave fronts right because they are the direction of propagation of energy at any instant of time right so from the frame of acoustons so let's say there is some wave, wave front and acoustons are approaching the detector so from the frame of acoustons had the detector been stationary it would have covered a distance c dt relative to the acoustons right so because acoustons are moving with the velocity c therefore in a dt time acoustons go a distance dt c dt and since detector is stationary so detector appears to be coming at a distance c dt nearer to the acoustons okay but since the detector is also moving towards the acoustons this distance becomes c plus vd dt right so detector is able to move a further distance of c plus vd instead of uh, c dt so that means what the intercepted energy will also be scaled up by a factor of c plus vd upon c and this is the intensity for the stationary detector so we just need to scale up by a factor of c plus vd upon c so that's what i have done so i double dash i'm calling it is i dash into c plus vd by c which is also 1 plus vd by c you can write and this is the expression that you get and that's how you get the answer for part c so that was my analysis for pathfinder check your understanding chapter 10 question 13 i hope you uh, like my analysis and if you did like my analysis please do give a thumbs up to my video and please do share this video as much as possible in various uh, whatsapp groups or telegram groups or discord servers uh, where your friends might also be benefiting from this video who are preparing for JE or Olympiads and uh, thanks a lot for watching this video and uh, please keep coming back to my channel for more awesome stuff see you in the next